Hello everybody, this is Nanduram and we are from Sonu Academy. Today we are going to explain about human digestive system. In this lesson, we are going to discuss about the parts and process of human digestive system. Parts of human digestive system. It consists of mouth, salivary glands, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, liver, gallbladder, bile duct, pancreasis, duodenum, small intestine, large intestine, appendix, rectum and anus. In human beings, the digestive system starts from the mouth. Mouth is only an opening part of the digestive system. Taking in of food through the mouth is called injection. The cavity or space in the mouth is called oral cavity or buccal cavity. The digestion starts in the buccal cavity. This buccal cavity consists of teeth, tongue and three pairs of salivary glands. The physical and chemical nature of food changes when it is masticated with the help of teeth and mixed with the saliva. Let us see about the teeth. In mouth, there are four types of teeth are present in human beings. There are incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Each of this type of teeth is having a special type of function. The arrangement of the teeth is same on the upper and lower jaws. An adult human has 32 teeth and these are divided into 8 incisors, 4 canines, 8 premolars and 12 molars. The tongue is a muscular and pushes the food onto the teeth during the mastication. It also helps to push the masticated food into pharynx. The taste verbs on the tongue sense the taste of the food. This process is done by the teeth in the mouth. Now let us learn about the salivary glands. There are three pairs of salivary glands present in our buccal cavity. They are called parotid, sublingual and submaxillary glands. The parotid glands are present near the ear. These glands especially they secretes into the buccal cavity through the ducts. The other two pairs of glands opening below the tongue through the ducts. The saliva is released when the foot is present in the buccal cavity. It is also released at the sight and smell and even through the foot. The saliva contains a large amount of water and a small amounts of salts and mucus. The saliva is slightly alkaline in nature and it contains an enzyme called salivary amylase. This salivary amylase converts the starch into dextrins and maltose sugars. After the food stays only for a short time in the buccal cavity, the starch is partially digested here. The mucus which is present in the saliva makes the food sticky and helps its passes easy through the pharynx. The food in the buccal cavity undergoes many changes and many changes including physical changes also. The saliva is also useful as a solvent for dissolving the chemical substance present in the food. The food next it goes into esophagus. Points to be remembered in this lesson are the process of hydrolyzing complex food molecules into simple substance by the enzyme is called digestion. The digestive system in man consists of mouth, buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small intestine, large intestine, rectum and anus. The teeth, tongue, opening of three pairs of salivary glands are present in the buccal cavity. The parotid, submaxillary, sublingual glands are secrete saliva. The saliva is alkaline and consists of water, salts, mucus and amylase. The amylase converts starch into dextrins, maltose and sugars. The portion behind the tongue is pharynx. The tongue pushes food from the pharynx into esophagus. Human digestive system, the function and the movements of esophagus. Esophagus. Esophagus is a narrow tube and connects pharynx and stomach. It has both voluntary and involuntary muscles. 
These muscles are arranged circularly and longitudinally. The internal wall of the esophagus is lined with a mucous membrane which secretes mucus. Mucus acts as a lubricant and helps in the easy and smooth passage of food. The swallowing means pushing of food into esophagus is an act of voluntary muscle. Once the food enters into esophagus, the swallowing becomes an involuntary act. When the food enters into esophagus, the muscles present in its walls becomes contract and relax alternatively by producing a wave-like movements. This type of movements are called peristaltic movements. These movements, they help in pushing the food down to the esophagus into the stomach. The peristaltic movements of esophagus are shown as involuntary act. There are no digestive enzymes in esophagus. The esophagus is only a passage through which food enters into the stomach. Hence, the food does not go any changes in pharynx and esophagus. However, amylase which is present in the saliva continues to act on the starch present in the food. Hence, the esophagus is only it acts as a bridge between the mouth to stomach which passes the food from mouth to stomach. From this, the food enters into the stomach. Points to be remembered in this lesson are Esophagus connects pharynx with stomach and per the peristaltic movements of muscles in esophagus moves the food into the stomach. Human digestive system, the function of stomach. Stomach. Stomach is a muscular bag. It is present on the left side in the abdominal cavity below the diaphragm. The part of the stomach into which esophagus open is called cardiac stomach. The part of the stomach that opens into duodenum is called pyloric stomach. Opening of the pyloric stomach into duodenum is protected by spyloric sphincter. The muscles in the walls of the stomach are shown as involuntary muscles. These muscles are arranged in longitudinally, diagonally and circularly. These muscles construct in different directions. As a result, foot is churned in the stomach. The stomach has shows three major important tools. They are, it stores the food temporarily for some time and the mixing of various components in the food truly this occurs due to the construction and relaxation of muscles and it brings about a physical and chemical changes in the food. Internally, the stomach wall is lined by a mucous membrane, a number of glands called grastic glands that are present in this membrane. Each grastic gland is opened by a small pore into the ileum of the stomach. The grastic gland secretes a type of juice called grastic juice and mucin. Let us see about what is a grastic juice. The grastic juice is a thick, clear and straw colored fluid. The grastic juice contains hydrochloric acid and enzymes. The food get mixed with this hydrochloric acid present in the grastic juice and the hydrochloric acid kills the bacteria which is present in the food. And it also destroys the structure of proteins so that the enzymes can digest them easily. The mucous membrane protects the stomach wall from the action of acid which is present in the gastric juice. The pepsin and lipase are the enzymes present in the gastric juice. When pepsin is secreted, it is in inactive and it is called as pepsinogen. The acid converts inactive pepsinogen to pepsin which is the active form of the enzyme. Now, the pepsin breakdowns into proteins and into peptones and proteases. The lipase converts the fat into fatty acids and glycerol. In children, another enzyme called renin is secreted into the stomach. It causes curdling of milk. This enzyme disappears as the child grows. The food is retained in the stomach for 2 to 4 hours and it is partially digested in the stomach. As the food is undergoing changes in the stomach, the spyloric sphincter closes the opening of the stomach into duodenum. 
the spiloric sphincter allows only a small the spiloric sphincter allows only a small quantities of food into duodenum at a time the food that enters the duodenum is called chyme this is an acidic and very soft in nature from the stomach the food is entering into the duodenum points to be remember in this lesson are the stomach is a muscular sac present below the diaphragm and on the left side of abdominal cavity it is an involuntary muscles uh, and there are arranged in longitudinally orbicularly and circularly in the walls of stomach the stomach has three important functions and there are temporarily stores food and food is a mechanically mixed by the action of muscles and it shows food undergoes many chemical changes due to the action of digestive enzymes the gastric glands present in the wall of stomach secrete a thick clear and hay colored gastric juice the hydrochloric acid such as pepsin and lipase are present in gastric juice the pepsin converts proteins into peptides peptones and proteases the lipase converts fats into the fatty acids and glycerol the partially digested food enters into duodenum from the stomach it is called chyme duodenum pyloric sphincter liver gall bladder and pancreas let us see what are the changes that takes place in the duodenum 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 is a u shaped and connects stomach with ileum bile from the liver and pancreatic juice pancreas is reach duodenum through a separate duct which is called pyloric sphincter and remains closed until the digestion of food in the stomach it is completed laterally it opens and allows a small amounts of acidic chyme to enter into the duodenum so that the entire duodenum is not filled with chyme the pyloric sphincter closes immediately after the chyme enters into duodenum and this prevents the back flow of chyme into the stomach the opening and closing of pyloric sphincter is shows an involuntary action after this let us learn about the liver liver it is also present on the right side of the duodenum below the diaphragm it is brown in color there are four lobes in the liver the cells present in the liver are called hepatocytes the liver produces bile which bile reaches duodenum through a duct called bile duct now let us see what is gall bladder the gall bladder is a pear shaped dark colored sac the bile is stored temporarily and also concentrated by the removal of water in the gall bladder bile from the gall bladder is sent in a into bile duct through a cystic duct bile in human beings bile has a mixed color of yellow and golden brown bile is a thick and sticky fluid fluid it has about 86 percentage of water bile salts and bile pigments sodium cholate and sodium deoxycholate are the bile salts which are present in bile the bilirubin and biliverdin are the bile pigments the bile pigments are produced during the degradation of hemoglobin and the color of bile depends on the amount of bile pigments there are no digestive enzymes in the bile but the bile salts change the fats into small microscopic colloids or particles this is called emulsification the emulsification of fats helps lipase to act on fats the emulsification of fats by bile salts is an important step in the digestion of lipids and absorption of fatty acids when the bile ducts is blocked the bile gets mixed with blood and circulates in the bloody because of this the eyes and the skin becomes yellow and this changing process is called jaundice let us see what about pancreas pancreas is also an yellowish gray gland and it is present on the left side of the duodenum below the stomach there are two parts in pancreas one of them is called exocere pancreas and the cells of exocerin pancreas is open into ducts and secrete a juice called pancreatic juice all the small ducts 
joint to form a pancreatic duct which opens into duodenum there are trypsin chymotrypsin amylase and lipase are the important enzymes present in pancreatic juice the pancreatic juice also has a large amount of bicarbonate which neutralizes the acid present in the chyme and makes the chyme slightly in alkaline after that the trypsin and chymotrypsin hydrolyze to proteins these two enzymes are produced in their inactive forms called trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen these are converted into their active forms by another enzyme called enterokinase this enterokinase is present in the intestinal juice once a small amount of active trypsin is formed it converts the rest of the inactive enzymes into active enzymes this process is called autocatalysis the trypsin and chymotrypsin are active in alkaline medium and the proteins that are partially hydrolyzed by pepsin and are completely hydrolyzed by by chymotrypsin to polypeptides and the amylase which is present in pancreatic juice act on carbohydrates and producing dextrons and finally converts them into maltose sugars the amylase also act on dextrins formed due to the action of salivary amylase and converts them into maltose sugars the lipase which is present in pancreatic juice converts them into emulsified fats into glycerol and fatty acids the second part of pancreas is consists of isolates of langerhans cells which help in secretion of insulin this part comes under the endoceric system and after the all process is completed then the food enters into the small intestine points to be remember in this lesson are the partially digested food enters duodenum from stomach it is called chyme the liver secretes bile into duodenum the bile consists of bile salts bile are required for the emulsification of fats the pancreas secretes pancreatic juice such as bicarbonate trypsin chymotrypsin amylase lipase which are present in pancreatic juice the trypsin and chymotrypsin are secreted in their inactive forms in um, the enterokinase convert this inactive forms of this enzymes into active form the trypsin and chymotrypsin break down the proteins into peptides this peptidases hydrolyze the peptides to amino acids the amylase present in pancreatic juice acts on carbohydrates and convert them into dextrins and finally into maltose sugar and then the lipase digests the fat human digestive system the structure and functions of enzymes which are present in small intestine the small intestine is a tube of 6 meters length and 3 cm of width the anterior part is called duodenum and the middle part is called jejunum and the posterior part is called ileum the ileum joins large intestines the middle part of intestine is coiled the cells present in the intestinal walls secrete mucus and enzymes in the form of intestinal juice there are enterokinase peptide lipase sucrase nucleolides nucleosides are some of the enzymes which are present in the intestinal juice here the food is partially digested and enter the intestines mixes with the intestinal juice the enzymes which are present in the intestine completely digest the partially digested food let us see the following digestive process are taken in the intestine the peptidase converts peptides into partially digested products of proteins into amino acids and the intestinal lipase completely digests the fat the enzymes such as sucrose maltose lactose hydrolyze and respectively converting them into glucose the other sugars are also produced in this process next the nucleotide and nucleosides completed the digestion of nucleic acids 
द एंड प्रोडक्ट ऑफ डाइजेशन आर अब्सर्व इन द इंटेस्टाइन्स लेट एस सी हाउ द अब्जॉर्बन इज डन इन द इंटेस्टाइन द अब्जॉर्बन मीन्स द ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ डाइजेशन फ्रॉम द इंटेस्टाइन इन टू ब्लड मीन्स थ्रू द वॉल्स ऑफ इंटेस्टाइन इज कॉल्ड अब्जॉर्बन internally intestinal wall has a number of finger like process called villi this villi increases the surface area of absorption the blood vessels and lymph vessels are present in the form of a network in the villi they products of digestive systems are absorbed first into the villi and from there into the blood vessels and lymph vessels after this the food enters into the large intestine large intestine and it is greater than the diameter of small intestine the large intestine is present between the small intestine and rectum the wall of a colon is made up of involuntary muscles the movement of these muscles pushes the food into large intestine the water and minerals salts and present in the chyme are absorbed in this large intestine and soft solid facies is formed this phase is consist of undigested food material and dead bacteria bile salts and bile pigments by this peristaltic means wave like movements of large intestine phases is pushes towards the rectum it is expelled out throughout the anus this happens when the sphincter muscles that guard anus expanded this activity is called defecation appendix at the place where the ileum meets a large intestine there is a finger like structure called appendix in human beings appendix has no specific function so it is very much reduced and called as vestigial organ points to be remember in this lesson are the intestinal gland secretes the intestinal juice such as enterokinase peptidase lipase sucrose nucleotides nucleosides are some of the enzymes which are present in the intestinal juice the enzymes of intestinal juice completely hydrolyze the food material in the diet the digested food is absorbed into the blood through the wall of intestine the villi are finger like projections present on the walls of small intestine the villi increase the ab absorption surface of small intestine the water and mineral salts are absorbed in the small intestine the facial matter containing undigested food material such as bile pigments and dead bacteria is formed in the large intestine and it is pushed into the rectum at the last the appendix it is a finger like structure and it is present at the place where the ileum meets a large intestine thank you This is Nanduram and we are from Sonu Academy